I said that. No, actually, I was in Syria. I visited Syria in 2014, and again, I visited this year. And as I've just come back a few days ago, uh, and other speakers will be speaking about um, issues surrounding the conflict, I would just like to give a brief update on the situation in Syria right now and show some pictures that I took during my visit, which I think are important to see. So uh, since the topic of this seminar does involve foreign intervention, I would like to say that in the name of democracy and freedom, foreign intervention has destroyed my country. Because of the uh, popular support that the Syrian army has inside of Syria, they have managed to retake many areas that were previously held by militant groups. Uh, and because of that, I was able to go into these areas and see for myself the extent of the destruction that was inflicted by these militants that are supported by Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey, and the United States, along with their NATO allies. So for four whole years, Western people were relentlessly told of the horrors allegedly committed by President Bashar al-Assad, with almost no coverage of the many, many atrocities committed by the so-called rebels. So I'm literally going to show you a sliver of the destruction that I saw while I was there. Malula is an ancient Christian town in the outskirts of Damascus. It is more than 2,000 years old and a UNESCO heritage site nominee. It was first attacked in September 2013 when a suicide bomber followed by a truck of foot militants blew up his car at this Syrian army checkpoint that was protecting the town. They stayed in there for around two weeks until clashes between them and the Syrian army forced them to pull out, but then they attacked again in November. So a volunteer uh, national or local defense force fighter from Malula told me that many of the militants weren't Syrian. Some of them spoke in dialect, Arabic in other different dialects. Some of them didn't speak Arabic at all. They'd speak different languages. And he'd say when they occupied the higher grounds, like on this mountain, they'd roll down tires filled with explosives onto the houses that you see below. Luckily for Malula, it had tunnels underground where the civilians could evacuate from. And if it weren't for these tunnels, many, many more civilians would have been killed by the militants. But once they found out about them, they blew the tunnels up as well. So what you're seeing here is a blown up tunnel. This whole area here was covered before. However, the destruction... <coughs> committed against Malula's heritage, uh, ancient buildings and churches was just impossible to comprehend. The fourth century monastery of St. Takla was stormed. This is the door that was blown off by the militants. The whole monastery was burnt down. And a statue of Jesus Christ that used to sit on top of the mountain, as you see there on the left, was brought down and beheaded. And many historical icons and valuable pieces were desecrated or stolen. There are no original icons left in Malula. All of them have been stolen um, or, or desecrated. They are being smuggled out of Syria and being sold to outside countries. What you're seeing here is a copy. None of the originals are left. It's just more destruction. And these things are thousands of years old. This is a mosque in Malula. You can see a hole in the wall there. Militants would blow holes in the wall so they could move from one building to another uh, easily without having to go outside and be spotted. This is the bottom level of the mosque that was completely burnt down the top level was destroyed as well. 
when you walk around the streets, their graffiti is still there. Um, this one translates to, by God, we will saw the necks of all enemies of Allah. And it's signed by Jabhat al-Nusra. I also visited Homs, which was once a very beautiful city. Unfortunately, after militants were forced to surrender and pull out, it's been turned into this. Uh, a story that didn't get enough focus in the media, like many stories in Syria, is of the Dutch priest, Father Franz. Uh, he lived in Syria for 45 years in Homs, and he refused to leave Homs after the, the militants came in and the siege began. So he stayed inside Homs for two years. He refused to leave in solidarity with the people who were still stuck inside. Two days before the militants were due to surrender. They had done a deal with the Syrian army. They were going to pull out and flee to the north of the country. A militant came into his church. He sat him down on a chair and shot him in the head. This was a purely sectarian attack. Absolutely no point to it. And this was his grave. He was buried inside the church. This is a school that was burnt down and bombed in Homs. More churches as well. Again, these churches aren't 10 year old churches. They're 1,000, 2,000 year old churches. This is all history being destroyed, culture being destroyed. There are 317 archaeological sites looted in Syria. Six of them are world heritage sites. So far, 6,000 pieces we managed to be, we managed to save them from leaving Syria. So on the borders as they were leaving, they were caught and brought back. But thousands and thousands more are being smuggled outside of Syria. Um, and so far there has been no assistance from any foreign government to stop the smuggling of Syrian artifacts. I do need to say though, when we visited um, the director of antiquities, he did say Lebanon is the only country in the world that has so far helped Syria bring back some of its antiquities. And an example of that uh, was a 2,000 year old door, wooden door to a, a monastery, one of the monasteries in Malula. Now on to Damascus. So Damascus is one of the oldest cities in the world. Uh, According to UNESCO, it was founded in the third millennium, but it has also suffered damage uh, to its heritage sites. Terrorist car bombs and mortar attacks continue to terrorize the people there on a daily basis. On the 1st of February, a bus in a busy marketplace exploded. I was just a couple hundred meters away from it when it happened. Uh, the bus was carrying Shia pilgrims who had come from Lebanon. And some more pictures. Um, so this was a targeted sectarian attack, just like all attacks are from the people who are fighting the Syrian army. On the 5th of February, Zahran Alush, the leader of Jaysh al-Islam, who are considered to be moderates by Western governments, he controls an area called Duma. Uh, he ordered a massive mortar attack on Damascus. I woke up that day around 7 a.m. Um, because of the sound of these really loud whistles, which I thought at first were ambulance sirens, but then I realized that they weren't. I stepped out onto my balcony. I could see people running for cover in the streets. Every time a blast would go off, they'd lift their arms and cover their heads. Uh, yeah, the next day he did an interview with the Muslim Brotherhood propaganda channel, Al Jazeera, and he said that all the sites that he targeted were military ones. And that he later confirmed this and he was happy with what he executed. 
some of the targets that were around me, for example, the cafe that was just down the road, uh, a park that was also nearby where hundreds of people sit in every day, the Four Seasons Hotel, the Baramki neighborhood, the Tuliani neighborhood, uh, a wedding reception. These are just the areas that were in my proximity. None of them were military targets. In fact, I don't think any of his targets were military ones. The very next day, I, my heavily pregnant friend went into labor and I went with her to the hospital. Um, the day of the attacks, she had to walk up and down five flights of stairs uh, every time the mortars would start. So the, during the first half an hour, about you, it felt like three mortars were landing a second. And then they continued on during the day, but they were more separate. And this was in the French hospital. And what I noticed in the room where she was giving birth is that there was shrapnel damage all around the room and bro broken windows. And the French hospital was attacked by the so-called rebels on at least three occasions. Thankfully, they gave birth to a beautiful baby girl called Suriana, who means a lot to me. Um, but while I was there, oh, by the way, Suriana translates to our Syria. So that name is very significant as well. But while I was there, I couldn't help but think of the place where I was at. I was in a French hospital, which was built by the French occupation of Syria, and which obviously survived the subsequent Syrian revolution that brought an end to that occupation. And that makes sense because revolutions don't destroy schools and hospitals. What is happening in Syria right now has nothing to do with a revolution. And it is not something that targets President Assad either, like the pro-interventionists want you to believe. It is the complete destruction of a nation and it is a form of genocide. When infrastructure is being destroyed, factories sacked, people displaced, and archaeological sites looted, just ask yourself, what does President Assad have to do with this? What does he have to do with the looting of archaeological sites? What does he have to do with the slaughtering of minorities? Christian history has survived in Syria, not only Assad's rule, but all Islamic conquests since they first began, until now. And the sovereignty of Syria must be protected. It is not normal, let alone legal, for one government to openly declare that it will train 5,000 militants to go and fight another elected government. And let me say the people that these militants are going to be fighting are the Syrian people. Our fathers, our brothers, our sons. Assad does not have a factory where he makes soldiers of his own. Our families are going to be the ones who will die trying to defend our country. Like what happened in the town of Adra, where bakers were cooked in their own ovens and parents were forced to kill their own children with grenades just so they wouldn't be taken alive by these monsters. This was never a revolution in Syria, and it never will be. It was a conspiracy from the beginning. You cannot be so naive to think ISIS or Jabhat al-Nusra or Jaysh al-Islam or any of these sectarian death squads who are hell-bent on killing anyone who thinks slightly different to them started from a revolution. No, they are all radicals, and they all have a radical ideology. Their fight has nothing to do with freedom or with democracy. So as we enter the fifth year of this conflict, Western governments, along with their Gulf allies, continue to arm and train terrorists who they then funnel into Syria. They are not only murdering my people, they are destroying our history and our culture. The lies need to stop, and if anyone genuinely believes the narrative that our governments and mainstream media are feeding to us, then they need to go to Syria and see for themselves how Western governments 
with thousands of foreign jihadis and illegal economic sanctions are carrying out the genocide of the Syrian people. Thank you.